Ricegum's channel is dead. Surprise, surprise. Who would have thought that egotistically flexing designer clothes on 10 year old kids makes you look a little self-centered and isn't all that concrete of a long-term YouTube strategy? The Asian Jake Paul, the Walmart nigger higger, another one of those micro brain celebrities who are just famous for being famous like Jake Paul and Kim Kardashian. Proven only by the fact that all he had to talk about in his final uploads were his ex-girlfriend. From 200 million views per month in August 2017 to 2 million views per month in November 2020. And I think it's safe to say that no one is disappointed about this absolute leech's 99% drop in views. And in this video, we're going to go on a journey to discover exactly how it happened. Beginning with his rise to fame, then followed by his demise. The only appropriate spot to begin is at the creation of his channel. Ricegum began his channel on the 25th of September 2012 at the age of 15. This was followed by his first upload a week later, a Call of Duty video which gave us the opportunity to get an insight into the individual running this newly created channel. Yo, what up? It's your boy Ray. Rice flavor gum. You can call me Brian, that's my real name, you know? Because all you guys are, you know, my subscribers. I'm 15, I live in Vegas, I like to play cards. Following this first upload, Rice Gum basically went through the exact same process that every other YouTuber goes through at the beginning, which I like to call posting awful videos for two years straight, getting very little views, trying to find anything that works. So let's go all the way back to when I was in ninth grade, and uh, it, it, well, it isn't really all the way back, because it was only like 10 years ago. I mean, one year ago, because I'm in 10th grade right now, so it wasn't really that long. Rice Gum had some minorly popular videos here and there, but this strategy ultimately resulted in very little growth. Because two years after beginning to post content, Ricegum had only gained a total of 4,000 subscribers. However, this didn't deter Ricegum, and the videos continued along with the subscriber growth. Then, in February 2015, just after hitting 8,000 subscribers, a statement would be made by Ricegum which might have been a sign for the growth that his channel was about to receive. I'm really committed, so there's no really social life. It's school and streaming, and now I got YouTube to be a part of my life. Early 2015 seemed to be the tipping point for Rice Gum, and his channel began to grow fairly rapidly, specifically after introducing his review style videos for other people's cringy content. Ah, it just hurts my soul every time. Alright, man, this is really cringy. Just everyone prepare yourself. Here we go, man. This ultimately grew his subscribers from 8,000 to 50,000 over a period of 10 months. Today is crazy. We hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh. People liked Rice Gum because he was surprisingly quite humble, self-aware, and was genuinely appreciative of his audience. Thank you. I don't want to sound fake and overreact and stuff like that, you know. Um, every video I always thank you guys. I just want you guys to know that I am thankful for you guys and stuff like that. This humble personality provided him with an element of likability, a vital ingredient required for the insane growth that Rice Gum was about to receive. In December 2015, Rice Gum would upload his first video in what would come to be known as the Must Be Stopped series. I uploaded a video about a month ago titled These Kids Must Be Stopped, right? And it turned out to be my most popular video on my channel. These type of videos I'm about to show you guys can literally scar you for life. I mean, I just, ugh. In this series, Ricegum would find repulsive, cringy videos or posts and criticize the worst aspects of them. Some kids, you know, just take it too far and they're too young and I'm just here to put an end to it. People love the content and Ricegum was kind of unofficially selected to find these cringy videos and roast them for his returning audience and growing subscriber base. Dude, ASAP Rocky really needs to chill. What is she doing? Like, what are kids nowadays doing? Like, she must be stopped. In combination with these videos, Jacob Sartre Victorious, one of 2016's most popular people to clown on, responded to Rice Gum. No, no one said that. You have no supporters. Giving Rice Gum mass exposure as well as the opportunity to upload a video that to this day has received over 9 million views. You look like you got pooped out of an alien, boy. Boy. Jacob, you don't mean that. <laughs> Jacob, why? I know I look like a sweet potato. I know I have crocodile hair. Between January 2016 and April 2016, a period of only four months, Ricegum went from 100,000 to 1 million subscribers. Hey guys, it's me again, and if you couldn't tell by now, we just hit a million subscribers, right? And I am so grateful. And notice how I didn't say I. I said we, because we hit a million subscribers. However, this really wasn't anything impressive compared to what was coming in the near future. By the end of 2016, only 12 months after hitting 100,000 subscribers, Ricegum had surpassed 5 million subscribers, making him one of the fastest growing YouTubers of all time. 
It was also around this time that Risegun began to capitalize on the popularity of YouTube diss tracks with titles such as I Didn't Hit Her, 50 million views, God Church, 73 million views, and finally it's Every Night Sis as a response to Jake Paul's It's Every Day Bro, which gained close to 200 million views to this day and also went platinum. It's Every Night Sis has gone platinum. Platinum. 1 million certified units sold. Everything covered so far also began to wedge Rice Gum into the LA influencer scene, where Rice Gum began to hang out with FaZe members such as FaZe Banks and FaZe Temper, giving him extra opportunities for collaborations and growth. Rice just convinced me somehow <laughs> to sit in an elevator with him. Bro, thank you so much. 24, 24 hour hours. challenge. And perhaps these collaborations would be an influence for the next move that Rice Gum would make on the channel, namely a content shift from roasts to vlogging. So I want to try something new. You guys subscribe to this channel and signed up for this channel to watch me make fun of people. So what I want to do is make like one roast vid a week so it doesn't die out. And then those other six days, I want to start vlogging. On the 3rd of January 2017, Ruscom announced that he would be switching the content to mainly vlogging content as he was getting sick of uploading roast content. Sometimes it's not all about views, you know, it's about what you want to do. Now for many creators, this wouldn't have been the greatest move, but perhaps owing to his extensive network of other large YouTubers as previously discussed, as well as his ability to portray the best aspects of the stereotypical LA lifestyle, the shifting content was well received by his fans. Following this, Ricegum continually shifted his content to match up with whatever seemed relevant at the time, such as the Jake Paul and Fortnite era. Okay, look, have you heard of Fortnite? No. Okay, it's a video game where you shoot people, okay? okay. Ultimately resulting in Ricegum hitting the 10 million subscriber mark in April 2018. Dear Ricegum, at 100,000 we thought not bad. At 1 million we thought, well, Wow, that creator is pretty awesome. However, as seen on the graph, shortly after hitting 10 million subscribers, Ricegum's growth would stagnate and he would begin to fade out of the YouTube mainstream. At 10 million subscribers, nobody would have expected that the growth for Ricegum's channel would soon come to an end. His channel ending up as nothing but the land of broken promises, a poor upload schedule, and an ego the size of Jupiter. In late 2018, Ricegum began to build up a reputation as a guy who would always promise something to his fans but never deliver. This was usually in terms of upload schedule and video type, with the main scenario usually being that Ricegum would promise to begin uploading every single day. I'm gonna try to post every single day from now on. I'm gonna try to drop more music, uh, maybe weekly maybe once every two weeks but I'm dropping music uploading every day however would always fail to do so leading him to have to constantly apologize to his fans I have a lot of supporters and I have a lot of haters but slowly my supporters are turning into haters like it's a combination of lack of content broken promises and just being inconsistent is honestly all my fault you guys deserve a lot better what this started to do was erode the trust between rice gum and his fan base something found to be extremely depressing considering he used to say things like this in his 1 million subscriber special. I do realize that a lot of YouTubers hit a mil, hit 2 mil, 3 mil, and they just get satisfied and they just start slowing down, upload once a month, upload shitty videos. Just know that I will never change and just expect quality videos just every week. Another element that began to chip away at his likability was how quickly Rice Gun went from a nobody to a YouTube superstar. Now I try and avoid relatable quotes in my videos just because I think they make everyone cringe while also adding minimal value, but I feel like this one perfectly sums up Rice Gun's success into eight words. Slow success builds character, fast success builds ego. As Rice Gun's subscriber base began to grow, his ego absolutely shot through the roof, to the point where he was often nicknamed the cockiest person on YouTube. To analyze Rice Gum's inflated ego, I think it's best to compare his 50,000 subscriber celebration compared to his 10 million subscriber celebration. Thank you. I don't want to sound fake and overreact and stuff like that, you know. Um, every video, I always thank you guys. I just want you guys to know that I am thankful for you. I'm not sure if you guys know what this is, but if you had a million subscribers on YouTube, they send you a golden play button. The thing is, I had a million like two years ago on my main channel and my second channel. I have already had 10 mil though. Where's my 10 mil button? I don't even want these. Uh, where's YouTube? Where's the 10 mil button, bro? What are these? I should have had these two years ago, bro. Bro, these is the pool, bro. 
Trash, bro. The humble dude who would do nothing but roast the laughable idiots of Musical.ly had become a laughable idiot himself. Perhaps Ricegum's inflated self-image was most apparent in the way that he began to flex his wealth on his fans. Yeezy Red Octobers, Fragment 1, Off-White Nike, white Yeezys that are actually dirty because I actually wear them. Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys, Off-White Air Max. A move that would result in a lot of negative attention from both his former fans as well as other creators. In this phylum, you'll find members such as the Ricegum and the Paul Brothers, always bragging or flexing. Flexing for those of you, those of you who aren't 12 is when the money is thrown in the face of the viewer. Look how much money I have that you don't. As a whole, I think it's safest to say that Ricegum's inflated ego just made him much more of an unlikable person, especially considering that many people had originally subscribed to him for his humble attitude. Then, just to throw another spanner in the works, the reign of vlogging on YouTube began to come to an end, unfortunately at around the same time that Ricegum's subscriber growth began to halt. Vlogging was mass popularized in 2015, hit a peak in 2017, then fell off as a trend by 2000. 2019. When Ricegum first started vlogging in 2017, he had something new and unique to offer at the peak of the vlogging craze. As previously mentioned, he gave everyone the opportunity to get an insight into the LA influencer scene, as cringe as that sounds. But by around 2019, when Ricegum's subscriber count was peaking, people were kind of getting bored of vlogging. Not to mention that almost every other YouTuber in LA also began vlogging, such as FaZe Banks and Tfue. Yo, me and Mitch just got to the Fortnite arena for the first time, looking pretty sick, we haven't even gotten in yet. Rendering Ricegum into a position where he didn't really have anything unique to offer. At this same point when vlogging began to go out of fashion, many creators changed their style. But since Ricegum wasn't uploading all that regularly, he didn't really get the opportunity to try out new video styles, ultimately leading to stagnation and irrelevancy. Then, January 2019, the final nail in the coffin for Rice Gum. The Mystery Box Gambling Saga. Me and Mystery Brand actually teamed up if you don't know what it is. Basically, it's a site that has a ton of these like random mystery boxes. Like right here, he has like a Yeezy and Supreme and like technology, like smartphone one. On the 1st of January 2019, Rice Gum uploaded a video titled How I Got AirPods for $4. This video featured Rice Gum using a mystery box gambling website with the video being sponsored by the creators of the website. Rice Gum showed himself putting money into to the website and winning various prizes. Some bad prizes. I got some Converse for $100. Come on, yo. And some good prizes. This is actually a good shoe because like it's like a $2,000 shoe. Now on the absolute surface without going into any depth, this wasn't such a bad thing. However, if you dig a bit deeper, you can identify a range of problems with having such a video on his channel. Firstly, we have to consider his audience of kids who would probably do anything to get their hands on some of the designer products that were being displayed in Rice Gun's videos. Secondly, the video was released just six days after Christmas, assumably with the predatory idea that his young audience would have money from the Christmas that had just passed. Finally, and probably worst of all, Ricegum framed the video as if he was making profit off the website. There's no losing in this, because even if you get an item that you don't like, you just sell it back. Here we go. Hey guys, so I sold it back for like a thousand, which is so weird because I bought a hundred dollar box, but I got a thousand dollar shoe out of it, so I got some profit. You can sell it back for two thousand and buy even more boxes, bro. One sixty. I can sell this back for 600 and make profit. I'm gonna do it. I'm making profit. I spent $4 for this. Yo, I just finessed the website. $4 AirPods. You guys can see my balance right here. I started with like half of this and then I just kept opening stuff, got some cool stuff, and then I like sold back. So I made back some of the money. I'm up right now though. So like I've been having good luck on this site. Oh, that's a $10,000 handbag. I'm about to sell it. Yo, $10,000. He was basically displaying it like if you just keep opening the boxes and selling the shoes back, you're gonna make money. And obviously his younger audience and the potential people using the service under his recommendation aren't going to realize that the website is set up in a way so that you always spend more than you earn. This video received mass criticism from multiple creators such as H3H3 Productions, whose video on the saga has received 7 million views to this day. Although Ricegum's take is even a little bit more spicy than Jake's as he continues to insinuate throughout the video that this is a legitimate way to make money as well. The whole ordeal was so scandalous that the website being promoted shut down due to the criticism it was receiving. Whether this was just the timing or not, the video happened to be released at around the same time that his subscriber base began to stagnate, possibly indicating that this whole saga destroyed his reputation despite giving him mass exposure.
since this event, Ricegum has just kind of slowly been losing relevancy as the upload schedule gets weaker and weaker. Ricegum has failed to evolve from vlogging with his content barely changing since around 2018. So if we go back and make a judgement as to the exact reason why Ricegum has ended up becoming irrelevant, it's probably a combination of everything discussed. However, I would say that the main reason would be because of how little he posts these days. His videos still get over 1 million views each, but he hasn't posted in 5 months, which as we all know is about 50 years in YouTube time. I'm sure if he came back and started posting regularly, he'd probably still get reasonable views. However, if you don't put the effort into making the videos, then surprise surprise you'll only be getting a maximum of 80,000 views per day. However, I think it's also safe to say that it hasn't only been his poor upload schedule. Undelivered promises, an overly inflated ego, flexing on his young audience getting paid to promote gambling for kids. It's not like Ricegum has done any favours for his reputation in the process while not uploading any videos. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Feel free to put yours in the comments if you want. Drop a like on the vid and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.